Hi all, Shane here, Lana67. Uh, just a quick update on my striker build. Uh, spent the last day working on the weapon system, which is finished now. So let's do a quick 360 so you can kind of see what I did. Um, I did quite a little bit of weathering on this. Uh, you can kind of see the bronze coating on the gun sights, which is quite, uh, I think I got quite accurate to the real vehicle looking at reference pictures. What I did was um, I took uh, Citadel, uh, I think it was um, Warp Bronze. Uh, I can never think of the, the, the bronze I used here somewhere. Oh, yeah. Bear with me, here it is. Uh, warp Lock Bronze, uh, this colour. Okay. Painted it to the inside of, so you can see the way um, the, the central gun sight is a, a clear piece so I painted the inner face of the gun sight um, and then applied it with PVA and that gives it that reflective sheen because it's clear plastic on the outer face and what I did was I just masked off with a little blob of blue tack and I was painting the rest of the thing and the same too with the secondary sight or the, the, the range finder or the hell that is so uh, and what I did to get the shine on the smaller sight to the top left of the main sight I just put a blob of uh, um, gloss varnish just to give it like a reflective quality okay uh, the Mark 19 uh, it's meant to be this shiny um, from the references I found the Mark 19 have a semi reflective quality to them like a satin I think it's actually just how the, the iron or the steel is treated um, to the protected coat. So what I did was I just painted it um, Abaddon black from Citadel because it's kind of a, a glossy or a satin finish to it and put a black ink wash over it and then just picked out some of the edges on it on with a bit of steel just to show a bit of wear and tear. Nice and simple. Okay, so how did I do the weathering on the actual NATO green or the the green element of this, well the main body of this. So firstly I painted this in the standard way so I took my black, prime, primed the black, painted it first in a coat of cam green. So cam green, then mixed, of all the paints here, I just as easy to explain it this way, then mixed 70-30, um, um, so 70% green to 30% yellow ochre, and that's my highlight colour spray that mostly to the vertical surfaces keeping my pressure around I think it was around 12 to 12 PS per P PSI and focus the top you can't really see the difference now because all the weathering on top of it but it does add to it once I was dry I began my chipping process and how I how I uh, lightened my paint for the chips uh, you can kind of make them out I've, I've applied the light layer of dust so it's a little bit hard to see it but the dust kind of makes everything sit together and work so I took model colour grey green, mixed in some of this to a colour I was happy with, and then with a fine brush began to do some micro trips. Uh, I didn't chip down to the steel on many parts because these vehicles are relatively new, though on some reference photographs on the real leading edges like the, the protective louver on the gun sight you can kind of see the still the, the exposed steel. Uh, where's my little pointer? On this element here, and I just picked out a few of the the rivets and steel as well. But that was about it. I didn't go any further than that. Um, so I just microchipped um, the the leading edges of the, of the, uh, the weapon system where the crew would come into contact with, especially around the top, the the door, and what have you the ammunition drum okay and also uh, I, yeah I, I did most of the, the chipping on this because that, that, that would have the most um, interaction with the crew once I was done um, I took German camo beige brown and uh, if I wanted to bring the chip down to its primer layer which was generally that's, that's the furthest I'll go I'll, I'll normally bring it down to its primer no further uh, and I just took uh, grey, um, black, black brown for that. Very good colour for that. Also very good colour for doing letters. 
Okay, uh, what's next? The the rubber caps of the smoke grenades, the chargers are picked out in just black and they will be weathered up later on. So once the, um, the, the detailed paints and the chips were done, I made a glaze of Agrid's Earthshade. So I need to get some more of this. It's very, I use this in a lot. This is a, a lot of projects. It's a very handy little product. Just mixed a bit of water into it and applied a general shade. Uh, just bearing in mind, the Mark 19 was not attached until uh, this had been primed or until this had been until everything was finished. So I don't want to. So make sure your weapon isn't attached when you're doing this. Okay. Once I was dry, so that is my, my my glaze just to bring everything down to dark and everything to bring it more into line with how the real vehicle screen looks. Then I begin to add um, pin washes or panel washes into some of the darker crevices with a wash of 502 Octolong uh, Shadow Brown. Again, if you have any other oil or dark brown acrylic, it will serve its pr purpose just as well. And this was all laid um, after the, the weapon had been given, or after the, the weapon station had been given a coat of gloss varnish. Once that had been done, I gave, it, I gave it another coat of gloss varnish to seal that in, to protect it. Then I began doing some rain streaks, which you can, if you notice, uh, here you can kind of see some of the streaking and here so I had a bit of grime and rain streaks if you will and how I did that was I just took some two oil colours uh, I don't know what colour is this ivory black and titanium mixed like a, a deep grey like a German grey and uh, this uh, made a little wa uh, then this did pin washes and again this was on a new on a new layer of gloss you know, so each time I do an oil let it dry for a couple of hours or a day or two depending on how much you put down gloss coat it, let it dry put down the next layer gloss coat let it dry and continue so it does take time but it's not difficult to do and you don't need all that much like I know I'm showing off a lot of bits and pieces but I tend to use these in all my bills so it's not like I have different colours to everything, I just mix and match until I, I get what I want. Okay, so the last element I did is, if you notice the chain that links the magazine to the actual weapon system, I'm not entirely sure what the purpose of that chain is, it's probably to secure a retaining bolt into the weapon, or into the ammunition tray. So if you notice here, I have actually added a bit of rust, just a small amount, just add a bit of visual interest and that was done using AK's rust wash or light rust uh, for green vehicles so this will be quite good for general purpose anything that's green I think you could probably get away using this on anything uh, but lightly lightly don't use a lot I was considering using AK dust effects then to add some dust to this but I didn't really want to because it was too overpowering I, I wanted to stay away from it so what I ended up doing was the first time I've done this, and this is again before I added my Mark 19 grenade launcher, I um, took some surface primer, uh, this is surface primer uh, desert tan base, you could use any other buff or sand colour you have, it doesn't really matter, I just, just, I just had this at, at hand and I find it works really well for dust. I put about 70% thinner to, or even 80% thinner to 20% um, paint or pigment brought my air pressure way down to about maybe nine, ten feet or so, very, very low. Kept my my brush, my airbrush, about a foot away from the model. And again, I was, I had these masked at the time as well, so my sights were still masked. And keeping the airbrush constantly moving, and at least a foot away from the subject, I began to mist some dust on. And that is actually what um, really made this look like the photograph that I was basing it on. I was really happy. And I, like, I'm not pro. I'm not. Um, I don't even consider myself a particularly like one like excellent model maker. I'm just jumping. You know mean? So I'm very. That's why I'm so pleased with this um, because it came out a lot better than I actually thought it would. And also, I'm really happy how the misting picked out the, a really fine layer of dust on the, the caps of the grenade launchers or the smoke dischargers which also really kind of um, captured the photograph I was working on which is also the, the photograph 
uh, of my avatar on YouTube. So that, that's what that is, was a striker weapon system. Some brandy, Andy was asking me what that was. So that's how I did it. Um, I know it was a little bit overcomplicated for such a small job, but also it was a test for the main fagel. So these are all the colours I used. So I'll start from the very start. Uh, Agrid's Earth Shade for my filter. Let that dry. For my chips, chipping, but to make a lighter surface chips, it was the cam green mixed with grey green. Model so model air mixed with model colour grey green. That was let to dry. And then if I wanted to take the, the, the chip deeper, I mixed cam uh, camo black brown. It's gonna move this out of the way so you can see. So this might be useful to some of you if you if you wish to. I can do a tutorial if you want me to, but um, I hope like my explanation might be just good. Then for any um, deeper chips, I took uh, steel model air steel, really good color, goes on really nice, very bright. So make sure you put a small wash. I I actually applied a little bit of Agrid's Earth Shade over it once it was dried, just to tone it down somewhat. And also the, the dust layer does wonders to tone it down. Okay. Once I was done, I uh, I gloss coated everything. Once the gloss coat had dried, I made a pin wa uh, a panel wash using 502 Octolong Shadow Brown by Make. Great color. I use this in everything. It's wonderful. Um, I've had this now for about maybe five years, and I've still got about three quarters of it left. Then once again, gloss coat gl gloss coat gloss coated everything. Allowed it to dry or wherever clear or Johnson you're using or like um, uh, clear, clear coat or whatever I just use gloss because it's just I have access to it and then for my grime streaks or rain streaks I took two oil colours um, ivory black and white titanium white mixed them into a, a German grey style colour again you can the, in the intensity is completely up to you. Mix them up on a piece of cardboard and then just mix a bit of uh, and then added them to my weapon system by just moistening the area I want this. Uh, so when I was doing these streaks, I've explain how I did that just in case. I would moisten the area. That's, that's why it's important to put down gloss coats in between oil oil coats so, you don't, so they don't react. So I would moisten this area with gloss or sorry, I gloss coat, let it dry, protect the layer underneath it. Then I would moisten this area in white spirits put a few dots of the grey um, oil colour and then do the streaks by just getting a wide soft brush moisten with white spirits and pulling in one direction and that's how you do the streaks but it's important that you put your gloss coats down and it's important that you moisten the area then with a little bit of um, white spirits or it won't work too well for you so those two colours and very finally uh, also then should I say a bit of rust was done with AK light rust and then when all that was done everything was allowed to dry for, for several hours a very light misting of surface primer desert tan um, base allowed to dry and then it was gloss coated and then once it was gloss coated a weapon which was given a satin coat on its own was applied and there you have it and it's fallen off there you go so I hope you like it I'm really very proud of this and if you wished me to do a tutorial on this if, if my explanation wasn't that good um, I'd really be happy to do it just, just ask me in the comments if you want it or not um, it's simple stuff you know it's been done a million times before and like none of this is mine it's just uh, it's just a technique I favour because they're very easy to use and they're very user friendly so uh, I hope this was an interesting little video I'm really happy with this I'm, I'm chuffed a bit with it um, so uh, we'll be replicating this to different intensities on the actual fake itself. I won't be going too crazy with um, deep weathering, so I won't be exposing steel or as much or rusting. There might be a little bit of rust added to the plough because that will come into a lot of contact with the obviously it's a plough, so it's going to come into contact with the ground. It's going to start exposing the steel and the on leading edges, so you will get a little bit of rust. But bear in mind these fakes generally are very well maintained because it is a first world army that uses them. So thank you for watching, uh, stay safe, happy modelling, and speaking of extreme weathering, we will probably be doing a lot of heavy weathering on the T62.
So we'll be exper experimenting with the opposite extreme on that build when we get around to it. So again, thank you for watching. Stay safe, happy modeling, and watch out for those buses as always. Bye-bye!